torpedoes. Dive, dive, dive! Oh, tight squeeze. Hey, oh, that wind is like insane. I make videos and podcasts about Galveston history, but what about American history that lives in Galveston? In this episode, we head over to Pelican Island. A little off the beaten path for most beachgoers and cruise passengers lies a place of remembrance and honor, Seawolf Park. The legacy of the lost submariners of the United States Navy lives on at Seawolf Park. Seawolf Park is named in honor of a submarine lost during the Second World War, the USS Seawolf. Following World War II, the United States Congress decreed that each state shall create a memorial park honoring one of the United States Navy submarines lost during the war. Just north of Galveston Island, Seawolf Park resides on a piece of land once known as Pelican Spit, where one of Galveston's immigration quarantine stations once sat. Seawolf Park is a fisherman's paradise, and if you've ever ridden the ferry, you've definitely seen these World War II landmarks standing strong on Pelican Island. Among its historic treasures are the USS Stewart, one of the most well-preserved World War II destroyer escorts. The USS Stewart has a fascinating history, but in this episode, we will be diving into the history of a World War II submarine that's often overlooked, the USS Kavala. A huge thank you to our video sponsor, The Daily News, Texas' oldest newspaper, bringing you the news since 1842. Support your local newspaper, The Daily News. Here we go into the USS Kavala. As you enter the Kavala, you are met with the forward torpedo room. In this little video walkthrough, I'm not gonna give too much away because you need to visit the USS Kavala. It really gives you an idea of how tightly packed you would be working aboard a submarine and how large these torpedoes actually are. That's a tight squeeze. To go sideways. There we go. Grab. Could you imagine like before they installed that AC? The USS Kavala, a Gato class submarine, stands as a silent witness to the valor and sacrifice of the brave souls who served aboard her. The Kavala was set to be commissioned on March 1st, 1944. But 1944 was a leap year. Due to superstition, the captain and officers wanted to change to February 29th. The Kavala became known as a leap year lady. And you can see how even the officers aboard this vessel lived like sardines. Just imagine being packed into this little tiny cabin with a few other guys and this is all the space you have where's the switch you ready let's go dive 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 the kavala embarked on her maiden voyage venturing into treacherous waters to defend against the impending japanese naval attacks in the pacific kavala's primary mission was reconnaissance and locating the enemy task force to relay that information back to the united states forces during the Battle of the Philippine Sea, the Kavala relayed vital reconnaissance. She intercepted a formidable Japanese task force and contributed heavily to the resounding victory in a battle known as the Marianas Turkey Shoot. On this first mission, the Kavala's torpedoes found their mark, sinking the Japanese aircraft carrier, Shukaku, one of Japan's flagship aircraft carriers. After successfully sinking the Shukaku, the Kavala was attacked by 106 depth charges, sustaining heavy damage, but surviving to patrol the rest of World War II. This vessel is extremely elaborate, and it really gives you an idea of the technology they were working with while this vessel was active between the 1940s and 1960s. This is how you would dispose of garbage at sea. You know, this kitchen is hot already. I can't imagine the stove being on, you know, a few hundred feet under the ocean. Oh, tight squeeze. This was always my favorite part, the tightest squeeze. You went that way. This is the maneuvering room. Maneuvering room. Yeah. This is how you would actually maneuver the vessel. Yep, do they all have what they Run on them. And the aft mm -hmm. torpedo room. And it always surprises me how few people know about the significant World War II history of the USS Kavala. Torpedoes. Can I escape that way? Through the following year, the Kavala was ordered on six patrols in the Pacific, destroying three more Japanese vessels and engaging many more. The Japanese have accepted our terms fully. That is on August 31st, 1945, the Kavala arrived in Tokyo Bay and was present at the official Japanese surrender next to the USS Missouri. After World War II, the Kavala served in various capacities in the United States Navy until she was officially decommissioned in 1969. In 1971, the United States Navy transferred this vessel to Seawolf Park, making it a memorial to United States Navy submariners. A huge thanks to the Galveston Naval Museum and Chris, the curator. Thank you so much. While I had an absolute blast touring the Kavala, 
It's important to remember that this is a memorial for submariners lost at sea and American veterans lost in wars all over the world. So for any veteran watching this video, thank you so much for your service and dedication to this country. If you live in Galveston and haven't been out to Seawolf Park yet to check out both of these vessels, the USS Stewart and the USS Kavala, you need to come out here and check these things out. They are awesome. And if you or your kids are looking for volunteer opportunities, they are always looking for a little bit of help to maintain these vessels. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything at all, please make sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on social media. We are all over the place. Any social media platform, just search Galveston Unscripted and subscribe to that YouTube channel. Check the link in the description for some amazing videos and resources on the USS Kavala. Check that link in the description. If you would like to support Galveston Unscripted in any way, we've got merch, we've got t-shirts, we've got hats. I give tours, come on a tour with me. Go check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Galveston Unscripted.